Chapter 8, The Night Wanderer. High above the house, an owl surveyed the landscape. With its piercing eyesight, it could see deep into the forest, despite the darkness of night. It was the perfect nocturnal winged predator. Slightly hungry, it casually scanned the train below the towering oak tree to see what was available. To its lower right, something caught its attention. One of those two-legged creatures that seemed to be everywhere was crawling out of a window. Curious, it watched the human stand upright and brush himself off. Then, scanning the forest in his own manner, he looked up directly into the owl's eyes. It was as if the two-legged creature could see the owl, quietly nestled in the thick of the branches at the top of the very tall tree. The owl was used to being invisible. In fact, the construction of its wings made even its flight virtually soundless, a whisper in a land of winds. So it should have been impossible for this creature, famous for having poor night vision, to see the nocturnal raptor. The human pursed his lips and emitted a note perfect owl call. Hoo, hoo, hoo. It was so perfect. Even the owl did a double take. The two-legged beast could see him and talk to him. This was too much for the simple country owl. This was the way things were supposed to be. This was not the way things were supposed to be. Knowing there would be good hunting down by the lake, the owl eagerly leapt off the branch, spread its strong wings, and ascended into the night. As the owl flew north, the two-legged creature on the ground watched it leave. Then, smiling to himself, he noticed a dead leaf hanging from his left coat sleeve. Carefully, he picked it off and let it fall. Before the orange-hued oak leaf hit the ground, the newcomer to the forest had disappeared from sight, barely making a sound. Even the owl, it had decided to stay, would have difficulty following its movements. There was another predator in the forest of Water Lake. In the stranger's youth, there had been many stories and legends told of time animals, man spoke the same language. Then, depending on which variation you heard, communication broke down. Man and animal were still brothers and responsible for each other, but they just didn't talk anymore. Those stories came flooding back to Pierre as he made his way through the forest. The familiar animals of his youth were all around him. A skunk that was hard to miss for obvious reasons slept a dozen or so yards to his left, a small fox, unaware of the man sitting on a branch twenty feet above, stuck his nose in a pile of leaves looking for a shrew. Even the owl the man had locked eyes with earlier was now invisible in the distance to all but the stranger's unusually strong vision. A long time ago, in the before time, the stranger had gone by the name of Owl. He had answered to that name proudly given to him by his parents. His parents, it was hard to believe, a creation like him could have parents, born of a loving mother, taught to swim, hunt, fish by a loving father. But like many things in life, memories such as those had dimmed, some by time, some by intention. Far in the distance, he could hear the community slowly going to bed, living their mortal existence. In some cultures, the owl was a symbol of foreboding even of death. Some would consider the stranger to be the same. In the un unaccountable years, he had killed frequently, without thought, without effort. He was dangerous to those voices out there going to bed, like the owl to a mouse. He was strong, he was quiet, he was deadly. And what was worth, worse, there was nothing the unsuspecting people could have done, because many would argue he did not exist, and when you don't exist, it's very hard for people to defend against you. Once more, the stranger scanned the homes of his ancestors, take, taking in the sights, the sounds, the smells. In a flash, he was gone. It was time to visit the village of Otter Lake.